you are uh, friends with Grandpa Nelson on uh, Facebook, but uh, they were over in Ukraine for about three weeks. They do missionary stuff and travel and all the things, and uh, he's over there trying to get those Ukrainians straightened out. <laughs> and uh, some of you get that more than others. <laughs> The, uh, and he shared about a young man who was in drugs and crime and all the other stuff. And then at 15 or 16, he was in prison and, and somebody shared the gospel with him. And, and he had a God encounter. And now he is a missionary to Poland. A changed life. You see, I, I think sometimes people say... Does anybody ever really change? You know, I had the opportunity uh, every Thursday. Every Thursday I go up uh, to Bridges, which is on the back side of the jail. And I drive uh, around back through the barbed wire. And I just think, wow, that stuff is mean. I mean, it's that rolled razor wire. There's like three, three rolls of that stuff up on the top. And I'm thinking, well, let's dig under the bottom. I don't know what their problem is. <laughs> Always thinking about a way out, aren't you? And uh, so I got to go to the graduation Thursday night, and uh, and I got to see people whose lives have been destroyed by drugs and alcohol graduating. They have, they, they have a bridge that you cross when you graduate, and the and the ones who have already graduated are on the other side, and the, kind of I just smile. I think a little bit like heaven. It makes me think of heaven, you know, how the, we're going to have that, that crossover. And uh, so they get up and they share. And, and they share kind of their, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a year-long program, much like uh, Team Challenge. And, and, uh, and the one shared, he says, you know, I can't do this on my own. This is a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual battle. Because a whole bunch of them get the fact it is a... God thing that our will, we can't just say no, but we have to have that God divine hand working in us to empower us to, to be changed, to be created in a new image. And so uh, as those 16 or so crossed that bridge, I was just like, God, help them to stay free. Let those chains and the, that bondage be broken. You know, just allow them to make it. Allow them to make it. Help them to get the right people around them. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to read out of John chapter 10, verse 27. We're going to take this one passage and then we're going to. Uh, I'm going to take you guys with me down a little bit of a memory lane. Okay. Are you guys up for that? You're like, I'm um, here. I guess it's too late. Do I have a choice? No, you don't. We lock the doors. You're stuck. John, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. Heavenly Father, help us to know your voice, yes. to hear your voice, and to follow you. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. <clears throat> we'll come back along that way, but uh, many of you have lost your fathers. How many of your fathers have passed away? Yes. Yeah. And uh, so, yesterday, I, I have uh, a brother who lives down in Burlington who uh, does automotive stuff, got a shop, got all the things down there. And uh, so occasionally I'll take stuff down there. Some, it's probably just as easy to get done here. But I was like, you know what? I said, I need this fixed. And uh, he said, well, why don't you... Uh, Wait for a nice day, throw your motorcycle in the back, 
drive the truck down and ride your bike back. And how many of you know? Yesterday was a nice day. Yesterday was a nice day. And so uh, I loaded my truck, my motorcycle in the back. Thank God the deep ditches. <laughs> we live out in the country that you back up and pull right in. Wow. Because uh, that's an accident waiting to happen. I'm just saying, me going up a ramp. <laughs> if you want to have some laughs, just go on YouTube and Google loading motorcycles in pickup. And uh, it's just uh, one disaster after another. And I don't want to be on there. So Saturday morning, I, I got it loaded up and uh, got some coffee. And I headed down the road. And, and as I was driving down the highway in my truck with my motorcycle behind me, life is good. I just needed a dog in the seat beside me. <laughs> and uh, I, I've got the radio on, and uh, there's some guy on there, and it's just like <laughs> meaningless drivel, blah, blah, blah. And I was just thinking, I miss my dad. Yeah. You know, you're just, you're riding along by yourself. It's that time of year. <coughs> I have a, uh, I don't know if it'll play loud enough for you to be able to hear it, but uh, how many of you have ever uh, saved when, when you didn't answer the phone and they left a message? Yeah. I still have one for my father. Mm -hmm. I'll see if I can make it play loud enough. <coughs> Where's the speaker at? At the bottom. I ain't gonna. Basically, he said, "Hey, there, great white hunter. <laughs> I just got back from the dentist, spending five hundred dollars to get my teeth fixed, and, uh, and and I've had my last treatment, and I'm getting better, and I got to get better because hunting it, hunting season starts in six days, so I got to get better. And uh, I don't know. So don't always answer your phone so so you can leave a message. But I just kind of." I was thinking about him, and then I also, I was thinking about, I was thinking about my Heavenly Father. Because some of you don't have, some of you, A, did not have a father like mine. Amen. I was blessed with an incredible, godly father who was a minister, but he also was a man of God, who really was, he was the same everywhere, at home. <laughs> at the restaurant, in the hospital, he's telling people about Jesus. Walking around the park, wherever he was, he was telling people about Jesus mm -hmm. and, and sharing with them. And, uh, and uh, he has a thing called Faith Building Scriptures that he did years ago that I listen to every so often. I listen to that. And... Uh, as I was driving down the road and the radio was on with this meaningless blah, 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 I thought, you know, I need to hear from my father. Just wanted to hear from my dad. You just, sometimes you just want to hear their voice again, especially if they were a good dad. And if you're a father here today, live your life so that your kids want to hear your voice when you're gone. So... This will be louder. You're like, oh, that's piano music. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's how it starts. This is evangelist Norman Cathy Wedding with a series of faith building scriptures. If you listen to them over and over, they will build your faith until you are able to receive whatever it is that you need from God. The previous edition of this tape was produced <laughs> over 30 years ago. Tape, did you take that? Kathy's got five bucks. Not here to 
sell things, but I am here to tell you that <coughs> listening, so, you know, as I listen to his voice, because, I don't know, as, as I'm going through life and I've been talking to people, lots of different people, and I see a lot of people who started out well. John and I were having uh, lunch this week, and he was telling me about when he used to work for the railroad, and I didn't get approval for all this, but it's okay. He, it's too late now, John. And uh, him and his buddy at the railroad got saved, and, and they were the they were all on fire for God, and they were the God squad because hey. they were just talking about God, about how God had changed their life, and, and they were excited about the, and, and they're passionate about their walk with God. But not all of them are still making it. And, and the difference, what is the difference? Why, why some make it and don't make it? And I want to talk this morning about hearing. And, and you know, the beauty for me is I get to hear the voice of both of my fathers, my earthly father. And some of you, if I had not played that very first part where it says, hello, this is Evangelist Norm Winning and Norman Kathy Winning, uh, and yet just started farther on in, how many of you would have still known who that was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you know his voice. Yeah. You know his voice, and, and, uh, and yet as his voice shares the voice of my heavenly father, which is even better. My heavenly father. But I, and and as, I, as I thought about it, as, as I ran through the, the things, how blessed I, I am, the Of my earthly father. Dad, you got kids at home. I just want to speak to you for just a second. I know it's not Father's Day, but too bad. <laughs> I never remember my father yelling. When I think about hearing the voice of my father, it was never an angry, that kind of thing. Now, I will come to the other ones later. <laughs> I, I, never, I never remember him cursing. I, I, you know, I, I'm just saying that we, 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 one time we were at Waveland Golf Course and we were sledding and somebody fell down and I remember hearing him say, yeah, he lit on his butt and I was like, he said, what? I was just like, what? That was my dad. I was like, he wasn't, you know? I, I, it distresses me when I hear people who on the way home from church are swearing about stuff. They're mad about, I, I heard this past week about somebody who, who some occurrence took place in church a few years back and they were swearing on the way home to the church. From church in their car, I'm just thinking, no, your ch the daughter was remembering her father swearing on the way home. Dad, that should not be so. Those, they don't need to hear those words come out of your mouth, period. You are a reflection of the Heavenly Father. He puts you there to be that one who is in place of the Heavenly Father. So that when you're, as your kids grow up, they, understand, they have a greater understanding of who God is. Yes. I never remember him fighting with Mother. He usually just said, yes, dear. Not true. I, I know there were times. There were times when they didn't necessarily agree. I remember he was always hearing from God. And then he wanted to go down something and she's like, yeah, I didn't hear from God. And really, guys, if, for example, he heard from God when they were building a new church and he wanted to give $10,000. And this is like, 30 years ago. And she said, um, hang on there, buddy. <laughs> Here's the deal. You're going to die, and I'm going to be left with nothing. And I'm going to have to depend on Dan and Bill and Rochelle to support me. And that's probably not that good a plan. <laughs> She's like, whoa. Now, as they prayed and talked, they gave. And then God tricked him and took her first and left him to depend on us. 
Thank God for Kathy. <laughs> I knew his voice. When I was about 16, my friend and I went, we went south of Burlington to a strawberry patch, and we, we picked strawberries. We picked strawberries, and uh, I had a, about a 67 Volkswagen. An old Volkswagen. Absolutely no heat. Probably not the coolest thing in all of high school, because I was in high school. And uh, so we had picked all these strawberries, and I had uh, several things of strawberry in the back seat. And uh, we're shooting down Roosevelt, the main drag there, and, uh, and I, I looked uh, kind of ahead. It pays to look ahead sometimes. And I saw the light was green, but this lady in this 64 Buick decided not to go. And so I might have hit her. <laughs> really hard. Like 30, 35 miles an hour. Bam! It didn't really move that Buick much. <laughs> but the front of those bike swagons, they don't even have a motor up there. This kind of goes And I remember getting out and going up, and she was looking for her glasses. And they were in the back seat on the floor. And I'm thinking, whiplash. And and uh, and then I remember my father coming across the intersection, and uh, and I was in in the uh, police car, and the lady was giving the policeman her license, and so I went to give him mine, and he goes, uh, "I've already got yours." There's a blank spot from here to here, but what brought me out of that blank spot was my father's voice. Hey, are you okay? Yeah. And the policeman said, sir, you might want to take him down and get him looked at because he obviously has been concussed. Can you use that word? Sure. <laughs> he has brain damage. <laughs> I play football. Big deal. And uh, dad's like, okay. And they, and they had towed the car away. All this happened, and there's just a blank spot. No recollection until my father showed up. And then stuff started working again. And so, and I remember very vividly how we got in the car and he said, uh, he knew we'd been down picking strawberries and all that stuff. So I'm just saying, when you have several things of strawberry in the back seat, <laughs> when you meet a 64 Buick and stop suddenly, you got strawberries everywhere. I mean, so it looks like blood, exactly. They're like, oh, yeah. We get in the car, and they towed the little Volkswagen away, and, and we were driving away, and Dad said, hey, uh, you feeling okay? I'm like, yeah. He said, you mind if we stop and get those strawberries before we go to the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, Dad. <laughs> so I'm sure he's, he ate strawberries while I was getting my head x-rayed. <laughs> know, you know, to know your father's voice. Sometimes I knew my father's voice when I wasn't doing well. Bill, you're like, uh, it's a bad plan. You knew something wasn't going to be good. But even more than his voice, what do you think that I know of my father even more than his voice? His laughter. His laughter. It's a little bit like Ann over here. I know her laughter. I know that if I can say the right thing, she will laugh and it will make all of us smile. <laughs> exactly. His laughter. In fact, somebody made it. They went through his sermons and took all of his laughs that he had in his sermons and they dubbed them together. And there's a... It might be on Facebook somewhere or something, but you can go find him laughing for about five minutes. <laughs> I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And if you're in depression, you should get that tape. <laughs> it will change everything. But as much as... 
an earthly father matters and makes a difference. You know, and sometimes, uh, sometimes when you lose your parents, you just kind of adopt others. It's funny because just this morning, Glenn said to me, he says, you're like one of my sons. And, and my first thought was, wonder what's in the will. <laughs> And the girls are all like, no, nothing, nothing for you, buddy. <laughs> Man, tough crowd. <sighs> Family. If we're going to make it, the difference between those who make it in their walk with God and those who don't are those who learn the voice of God. Amen. You know, the verse that we read, it says... My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep know my voice. Do you know, have you heard the voice of God? Have you heard the voice of God? And uh, have, have you heard the literal voice of God? There was a guy in the book of Samuel little guy. His mother had been childless. She prayed to God. She said, God, if you will give me a child, I will give that child back to you. I will. So she raised him until he was like two, and then she took him to be with the priest Eli. And so he was there, and he was the helper boy, the, the gopher, the one who just was in the temple doing whatever the priest told him to do. And uh, he laid down, he went to sleep, <coughs> I think he was just sleeping on a mat on the floor. He didn't even get a real bed. Life was tough back then. And he heard a voice. Samuel. <coughs> Samuel. And he jumped up and he ran to Eli and says, Eli, yes, Master, what do you want? If you could only get your kids trained like that. Yes. <laughs> See, that ain't happening. And uh, Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And again, says that Samuel heard the voice. Samuel. Samuel. And he jumped up and he ran back to Eli. <laughs> Eli's like, dude, why are you waking me up? You know, old people, we value our sleep. <coughs> But he, Eli began to perceive that God was speaking to Samuel. And he said, next time that happens, say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And the, and the scripture says, The Lord came and stood, calling out his other time, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, Speak for your servant hears. And it says that he didn't, he was young and he did not yet know the voice of God. He thought it was Eli. He thought it was someone else. He said, Speak, Lord. He began to learn to know the voice of God, to have God actually, literally, Speak to him. That his voice. You guys, you don't know what the voice of God sounds like, do you? I don't. He's never, he's never spoken to me in that way. Uh, in the way, like in Deuteronomy chapter 4, we find that uh, Moses is speaking to the people, and uh, verse 10 it says, especially concerning the day you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb. When the Lord said to me, gather the people to me, and I will let them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on earth, that they may teach their children. And then you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire in the midst of heaven, with darkness and cloud and thick darkness. When God shows up, yeah, it's scary, amazing, Fearful. 
It says, uh, and the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sound of the words. They heard the words of God, but they saw no form. You only heard a voice. So he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform the Ten Commandments. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you may observe them in the land which you cross over to possess. See, they heard the verse. In fact, verse 33 says, Did any people ever hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as you have heard and live? To have heard the voice of God and live. You see, go to verse 36, it says, To you it was shown that you might know that the Lord himself is God. There is none other beside him. Out of heaven he let you hear his voice, that he might instruct you on earth. He showed you his great fire, and you heard his words out of the midst of the fire. Uh, in, the, in a different verse it says, Out of the heavens he let you hear his voice to discipline you. To hear the voice of God, to hear the actual physical voice, it's probably not going to happen to us, but it did to them. They heard the voice of God at one point and place. But it also says that God had Moses, he gave him the Ten Commandments, wrote them down on the stone, because he knew that you guys would have a, your, your tendency is to change things. If you don't like them, you change them. When it's written in stone, it's hard to change. Yep. Hard to change. Wrote them in stones, and, and he gave him other commandments <laughs> so that Moses could teach them. Because <laughs> to hear the voice of your father speak to you. There are times, you know, and it was interesting because as I was driving down the road, I, the thoughts in my head was, you know what? I don't. I. This is not a crisis. There's not a crisis. There's not big problems, big stuff, big anything. I'm just going down the road, and I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. See, sometimes we are guilty of only wanting to hear the voice of our Father when we have a problem and a need. We say, God, show up and fix this. See, the Israelites... They ended up having that kind of issue, that kind of relationship with God that, that they would do their own thing until they were in a world of trouble. And then they would call out to God and say, hey, God, speak to us. God, show up. No, God wants to have a daily relationship with you. So he says, I want to speak. And, but most of the time, it's not going to be that voice. You go through, Bible, through the Bible, there's just a handful of times when God spoke like that up. The Mount of Transfiguration. The voice of God spoke. And it's interesting, too, because if you look at, in the book of Acts, Saul is on the way to Damascus to persecute Christians because he is a religious person who hasn't yet, he's heard about Jesus, and, and, and he actually, he hates followers and believers in Jesus, because that's not the right faith. And therefore, they must be persecuted and destroyed. Huh. I'm sure glad it's not like that today. Amen. That was a joke, Pastor Ed. <laughs> <laughs> it's still like that today. I'm just telling you, in China, yeah. in Russia, in India, yes. in America, there are people who will punish you and come against you yes. if you proclaim that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Yes. Those same kind of things happen. So he's headed there, and God's like, you know what? I have had enough of your nonsense. See... In that second passage, it says, uh, it says, Out of the heavens he let you hear his voice to discipline you. I, I don't know. I love it when I would hear my father say, Good job. Yeah. Well done. Nice shot. Because we hunted together. That was the thing. This time of year, we... 
I never hunted very close to him because he was so noisy. <laughs> he always had to cut off one more branch. <laughs> like that. The deer can hear you. <laughs> so I, I just, not just that, but I came across some pictures the other day. We went up to uh, Lake Darling, special kind of doe hunt kind of thing. And it was cold. It was like it's going to be tomorrow. And it was cold. And we had all these clothes, I mean, bundles and bundles and layers and layers. And then he had a little tent. We had a little heater in there. And uh, it was a sunny day. And so I had to carry all that stuff in because he's old. You know, that's how that works. <laughs> so I carry it all in. I get it set up. He's got a little heater in his tent. I'm like, Dad, this is not hunting. It's not what real men do. He's like, shut up. Get that heater going, you know? <laughs> in a loving way. <laughs> I get it all set up and I think, okay, now I'm going to go. So I go out and I circle around and I'm coming back around and finally I'm coming back around and uh, I'm, I'm going through the pictures and brought all this back and uh, he's out and he's laying on the ground. He's out laying on the ground and my thought was, He's in heaven. It wasn't like he was going to get a deer anyhow. So I couldn't really say the deer were safe. But I just thought, he got out of his tent and he passed away. But it's cold, so he'll, he'll be good for a couple weeks. <laughs> Some of you just woke up, didn't you? I get closer. He got out of the tent and laid down in the sun and was taking a nap. <laughs> he was sleeping. I'm like, Dad, deer just ran by. He goes, no, they didn't. Uh, maybe not, but uh, the voice of your father. Sometimes there was the disciplined part of it. And so Saul, as he was headed there, it says that a bright light came and it knocked him down and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you being such a pain? And Saul's like, I, I, uh, hello, you just got knocked to the light by, knocked to the ground by a, a light and all this stuff's going on and you're like, who are you? I am Jesus who you're persecuting. Oops, sorry, my bad. I'll make a change. He heard the voice of God bringing discipline to him. Get, say, no, you can't go that way. No, you are wrong in your belief system. The voice of God came and said, you need to change your path and your direction. Now, usually God does not strike us down light that with light and we don't hear his voice but the Holy Spirit comes and he speaks to our heart and says you are going the wrong direction the direction of your life is not right you need what you believe is not true I don't know is everything you believe true some of you believe I'm a nice guy <laughs> Until you just heard the thing about leaving him out for two weeks in the cold. <laughs> then you're like, what kind of son is he? What if God speaks into your life and says, no, you're headed the wrong way. You're headed the wrong way. Your heavenly father loves you. I don't care how your earthly father was, your heavenly father, and, and I'm just saying that it breaks my heart when I see how kids are treated and how fathers who aren't even there, they never show up for their kids, they never, they're not there, or they're there and they're drunk and they're beating them and they're abusing them and they're abusing their, their, their wife and no, this is not how it's supposed to be. Men, stop being little children and be a man. Stop behaving like a child. Stop having life revolve all around you and become the father that your heavenly father has called you to be so that, so that when you're gone, your kids are going to look forward to hearing your voice. They're going to miss you. They're going to remember the things that you shared and did and, and that change your life because you're heavenly father you're that reflection 
They're watching you, how you're doing. His life was changed forever. Saul's life was changed forever because he heard the actual voice of God. But you see, the guy that I shared with from Grandpa Nelson in the Ukraine, who was the thief and the drug addict, he didn't hear a voice from God. Somebody handed him a piece of paper sharing with him about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You see, the two, th two ways you're going to hear from God most of the time is, and I saw, I saw a cartoon the other day, and the guy's saying, God, speak to me. And you see a hand come down through the cloud with a Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. He is speaking to you. He is speaking to you through his word. The Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was the Word in flesh, but He has given us the Word. And so, God is going to speak through you to you through the Bible. But the tricky part here is you actually have to open it. Did, did, did I hear somebody say, ouch? Yeah. <laughs> Pastor, stepping on my toes. Dude, it's all in here. Yes. His great love. Yes. The story of the prodigal son. Yes. Who was lost. Yes. And realized how lost he was. And he went back to the father. And he heard the voice of his father say, welcome home. You see, you're going to hear the voice of God through the word of God. Mm -hmm. But also, there are going to be times when you're going to hear something inside of you. Something inside of you is just going to speak to you. <clears throat> Here's the tricky part. Is it really God? Now, scripture Guaranteed, it's really God. Amen. It's really God. But sometimes you will have a notion or a something inside you. Something will speak to you. And if you are a new Christian, you're like Samuel. You're like, I am not sure which voice this is. I'm not sure which voice this is. Because I'm just telling you, there are a lot of people who have, quote, heard voices, and they weren't God. They heard a premonition. They had a feeling. They had a whatever. Something spoke in them. And they're like, okay, that was God. Does it line up with the Word of God? If it doesn't line up with the manual, it isn't the Word of God. When the lady said, you know what? God spoke to me and told me I'm supposed to leave my husband and go live with this other guy. She did not hear from God. She heard from her own sinful self and from Satan. That is, the manual says, no. That's not so. When you feel like that voice inside says, Take revenge on that person. No, not so. Mm -hmm. The manual says, forgive. Mm -hmm. <coughs> forgive because your heavenly Father forgave you. Yes. All of your sins. Last week. Last week we had four different ones say, you know what, I want to come back to my heavenly father. And that was able to happen because Jesus died on the cross and took your punishment and the pain for your sin. You know, one of the biggest lies out there is that we are we don't need 
to be forgiven because we're good people. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not true. It's funny. I had a conversation with somebody this morning who, who said, who has lost a lot of weight, and said something to the vein of, I didn't realize how fat I was. And he posted, posted a picture on Facebook in his old clothes. It's, it's fat clothes. And it's like, dude. So when he took them to give them to the, uh, to the secondhand store, he said, these are from uh, National Tent and Awning. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they laughed. <laughs> we don't realize how sinful we are. No. And the second lie is that you are so bad that God can't forgive doesn't matter either side. We all need a Savior. We are all sinners. And we all need a Savior. We all need our sins to be forgiven. We need to hear the voice of the Father saying, Welcome home. Yes. Jesus paid the price so that we could have that experience. That our sins could be forgiven and that we could come back to a right relationship with our Father. I remember hearing a while back about a daughter saying to her mother, do you think dad wants to talk to me? Do you think my father would be willing to talk to me? The father had been dying to talk to his daughter. He had been longing for that day when they could be restored. You see, she was confused. She thought he was holding, no. He was saying, come to me. You're my baby. Welcome back. You see, as fathers, that's what the Heavenly Father does. He's saying, come back. Let go of all that past, that junk, that crud. I am going to forgive all of that, and I'm going to make you a new creation. I'm going to set you free. As I watched those young ladies go across that thing this last week, and then I saw their kids running up and being restored to them. They need more Kleenex there. That's why we got Kleenex everywhere here, because God could show up. And when he does, you might cry. Yeah. Let's bow our heads this morning. Just like this past week when I just felt like I need to hear the voice of my dad. Not just my physical dad, but my heavenly father. Nothing extra special was going on. I just, I just felt like, God, I want to hear your voice again. Only I need you to speak in my heart. God, I just want a renewed sense of your presence. Jesus, I just want to hear your voice. This morning, this morning, Jesus paid the way so your sins could be forgiven and your life could be changed forever. You go from drugs and alcohol and thievery to a man of God, living for God and impacting lives and speaking the words of your Heavenly Father of hope and encouragement to those around you. This morning, if you would like to have Jesus Christ forgive your sins and change your eternal destiny, I just encourage you to slip up your hand this morning and say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. This morning, I want to get right with God. I want to go running back to my Heavenly Father. I want my sins to be forgiven. And all of that washed away. This morning is that time. Just slip up your hands and say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. I want to know Jesus. I want to be back with my Heavenly Father. Feeling just wrap 
his arms around and say, I love you. I've been waiting for you to come home. I've been reaching out to you this morning. If that's you, then just slip up your hand and say, that's me. That's me. church or anything like that, we're just saying, come back to your heavenly home. This morning, how long has it been since you heard the voice of your father. Crisis. I just, I just miss your voice. I miss hearing your voice. You see, as long as we continue to hear His voice, my sheep know my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. As long as we keep hearing His voice, we're going to be okay. His voice has to line up with what the Word says. We're going to be okay. We're going to make it. How long since you heard his voice? And maybe you've been not doing very good. And his voice, the reason you're avoiding his voice is because it might be the voice of correction. He loves you enough to correct you and to point you in the right direction. To speak truth in your life even though it's painful. But most of all, he just wants to say, I love you. I love you. It's going to be okay. We're going to make this. We're going to make this. Let's stand this morning. I feel like, I feel like, I, I don't know, I feel 
like maybe I'm not on the right trail here. I need you to say, yep, let's go this way. Let's go this way. This week. To just make it your goal to set aside time to hear the voice of God. To look into the Word to hear the voice of God. See, if you don't know the Word, when those other voices come in your head, you know which one's from God or which one's from Crazyville. Some of you have listened to that Crazyville one one too many times. It doesn't line up with the Word. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for an earthly father who loved me and who set an example of how to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray for each one who is here that they would sense and feel in your presence and your love. Lord, that you have adopted them. You're reaching out to them. You're wrapping your arms around them because you love them. You love them with an everlasting love. Lord, we just thank you. 